guys, are you looking to ace the ACT math section? If so, in this video, I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how you can use shortcuts or tricks to kind of hack your way through the section, maybe speed up a little bit or ensure that you get the right answer. My name is Brooke. I've been coaching the ACT for over a decade and a half. I've scored perfectly on it as a teenager on the math section. And I'm going to share some tricks that will hopefully help you up your score too. The examples that I'm going to use for this are from our math books, which are the best ACT math books ever. You can get those at amazon.com. They're also part of our online course, which you can find at supertutortv.com. So if you have either of those, you can look them up and follow along with me. So the first tip that I'm going to give you guys in our super speed tips is on complex numbers. Now, what are complex number problems? They're these problems that have imaginary numbers in them usually, or I. So remember those I questions? And some of you are like, I never learned I, Brooke. And if you never learned it, cool. I would recommend checking out the whole chapter in my book because I'm not gonna get to everything about complex numbers here. I'm just gonna talk about the speed tip. But the idea is that your TA-84 actually does complex number problems on its own. Now, sometimes when I do shortcuts with calculators, some of you guys complain and you're like, you need to know how to do it the right way. And I'm agreeing with you that it's good to know the ideas behind what you're doing on your calculator because not every problem is going to be doable on a calculator. But on the ACT, there are definitely some that are doable on the calculator. So I'm gonna show you that right now, that functionality. So one kind of problem that you can kind of do on these is you can take I to a power. We have for the complex number i such that i squared equals negative one. Sometimes too, you'll get i equals the square root of negative one. It doesn't matter, either mean the same thing, right? It's just the definition of i, which is our imaginary number, if you've never seen this before. What is the value of i to the eighth minus two i squared minus one? So my shortcut hack here, I'm gonna pull up my simulator of the TI-84 for you guys, and I'm just gonna show you how we do this on this calculator. Now, depending on how old your calculator is, there are certain kinds of complex numbers that your calculator may be able to handle better or worse. If you have a calculator, though, that you've purchased recently, say in the last two, three years, almost all of those TI-84 calculators can really robustly handle the imaginary numbers. And if you don't have a new calculator, well, then there's a little bit of gobbledygook in there, but you can still use it to get to the answer. So basically, the first thing that you have to do is go to mode and you need to make sure that you're in your imaginary number mode. So you see here where it says real and it says A plus BI, you just need to arrow down here. And if it's on real at the moment, you just need to arrow over to A plus BI, and then you can just click enter, and then you're going to be in that mode. You can press clear, you'll get out of the mode screen, and then you can proceed to just do complex number questions. And literally all we have to do, I is down here, and we use second right here like this, and we can do I to the eighth, minus two second i squared minus one. So my answer is just two. But if you have an older calculator, now some of you might be like, Brooke, I don't know what that means. It says minus two e negative 13 times i. Whenever you have this little e, it means it's going to be negative two times 10 to the negative 13th. And 10 to the negative 13th is basically like a really tiny fraction. So when we multiply that by two, this basically should have resulted in nothing or it should have zeroed out. So basically set that ugly thing equal to zero and then look at the value that's left. And so what that means is that my answer actually should just be two. So again, this is not like the most complex or difficult question to do, but the fact that you can just put your calculator in a mode and just like do it pretty quickly, pretty easily means you don't have to sit down. You don't have to think through, oh, what is this? Oh, what is this? And this isn't that hard to do and you should know how to do it without this crutch. But my point is, is this is another hack. If you have trouble with complex numbers, if they slow you down, you know, your calculator can help you do it sometimes faster. And it really just depends on the complexity of the question. There are some complex number questions that if you know the role with complex numbers, for example, if you know the pattern, of like i, i squared, i to the third, i to the fourth, and you have that pattern memorized, boom, this is gonna be a lot faster. But if you don't have that memorized or you have to recreate it for yourself or you have to jog your memory and like write it all down, and this kind of problem takes you a while, then this would be faster, okay? Next up, we're gonna talk about graphs. So we're gonna go to one of my favorite chapters from our math book, from book one, which is graph behavior. I have two tips for graphs. And the first one that I'm gonna teach you guys is pluck points. So plucking points feels a little bit fifth grade sometimes, but it totally works. And it's just a strategy you can use when you're trying to deal with graphs. And what do I mean by pluck points? Well, when you look at a graph problem, 
you can kind of pluck points and that makes it easier for you to check what the answer is. So here is a good example of a question where it's a great idea to pluck points. And now you can use this in combination with other strategies. So I might use a couple of different strategies here. The more techniques you have, that's actually my best speed tip, is the more outs you have, the more ways to do a problem you have, the faster you're gonna be. So you see I have this piecewise function here, meaning I've got three pieces and they're all kind of different. And what a pain in the neck it would be to graph this out, right? Because I would have to graph y equals this, and then there's a boundary to it. And then if I really want to be official, I have to put the boundary in. This is a ton of stuff to type into my graphing calculator. So trying to graph this out for like a, a graph question is going to be a little bit time consuming. I don't think that's the best way for this question. So what I'm going to do is I want to pluck points and I want to check them and see if they're true or not. So if I have x is less than or equal to negative 1, so at x equals negative 1, we have negative x plus 2. So that means this is going to come to an end when I plug in negative 1 right here. So I can go negative, negative 1 is positive 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, so y equals 3 when x equals negative 1. So I'm going to go to negative 1, which is right here, and I should be at 3. Nope, I'm not. So a is out. Negative 1, and I should be at 3. Nope, I'm out, right? Negative 1, and I should be at 3. Ooh, look, there's that point, right? And negative 3, 1, so e works and C works. And then I can go again and I can say, okay, here at zero, I'm at negative two. At zero, it looks like I'm more like negative one. So if I plug in zero here, I'm gonna see, is it negative one or is it negative two? So if I'm at zero, that means X is between here. So I'm doing this one and zero minus one is negative one. So I wanna be at negative one and you can see it's E. So for this one, I actually kind of self-imposed a point up top. I found this kind of hinge point, and then I plugged that in. I did a system of elimination. Then I looked at the two I had left, and I say, let's find one point that's different. When I plug in zero, I have two different points, right? I can compare those two, pluck the point, and plug it in. I'm gonna give you one more graph tip here, you guys, which is when in doubt, graph it out. So you have a graphing calculator, it graphs. Use that functionality if it's helpful. You can find solutions, you can find vertexes and trace, you can find zeros if you're given an equation. If you can graph it, you can find significant points. So if you don't know what to do and you have a polynomials question, a quadratics question, graphing is always kind of an out. So just remember that. We can look at this problem here. We have this exponential function here and it says n is between zero and one. So what I'm gonna do is just make up a number like one half, right, for n and do one half to the x. And what I would do is then just graph this out and then you can read through all these and it's going to be easy enough to answer the question because this has to be true for this graph. So that's a really quick way to solve a problem like this. So you can try that on your own if you want. I'm going to keep moving because I think that's an easy enough tip, which is use your graphing calculator. If it gives you kind of a scenario, make up a number so that then you can graph it or you know how to graph it and you can kind of be on your way. The last tip for you guys is percents. This is a percent shortcut tip that a lot of you might know, especially if you're getting, you know, like 34s and things on this, but a lot of you might not. I'm often surprised at how many students do percents the slow way. So I'm gonna do number seven from our problem set in our book. If you're in my book, I'm on page 51 in book two. Okay, in January, Gary could have run a mile in six minutes. In February, he decreased his time by 15%. In March, he decreased by another 12%. His mile time in March is what percent of his original mile time? So what I can do is really quickly Right, if I have 15% off, that means I'm preserving 85%. So I'm going to use the decimal form of that times six minutes, right? If I have then 12% is off, then that means I'm preserving 88%. So I just do 88% times that, right? And then I can just get out my calculator and do 0 0.88 times 0 0.85, right? And we get 0.748. So that's 74.8% of his original amount. So you can see all I need is to multiply these together because in my percent shortcut, his mile time is 0.748 times 6, and this is what percent of his original. Of means multiply, right? And I can kind of say what percent would be x of 6. So we're going to have 6x equals, you know, what I'm looking for, and this is my percent shortcut. So I can do this really fast because I just take this percent and I do 1 minus the percent in decimal form. And that gives me the amount to multiply. And you can see I'm working here in decimal form that's a little bit faster. But that's the percent shortcut. If you don't know it, you should know it, right? If you need to find a tip amount and you're going to give 17% tip, you should just do 1.17 times whatever your bill is, right? And if you then want 5% off on that, you can do 
0.95 times that, right? But you should know this percent shortcut. If you're taking a percent off, you subtract that percent from one when it's in decimal form, right? And you think about what's the amount we're preserving if we're taking a percent off. And then if you're adding percents, you just add it to one. So if I'm increasing something by 15%, right? I write 1.15. So really quick tip, pretty easy, but something you guys should all know and be implementing on the ACT because it will save you guys time. Cool. Awesome. So those are all my quick tips for today. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, I have a lot more of them on our online course that you can check out at supertutortv.com. We also have private tutoring options with me and with staff tutors. So if you need help on the ACT, definitely check us out. And finally, our ACT material on our YouTube is 100% totally free, as is our blog. So we have lots of stuff for you guys, no matter who you are, no matter what your budget is. We want to help you prep for your ACT. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube, and I'll see you guys on our next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.